What I found when I got here was this incredibly gifted group of people, which you've already interviewed a few of. Nesvin has been here for 35 years, and he um, is sacrificial in his work with the seafarers. And that could be said for Bill, who's on loan from SIH, or any one of the people that works here. Um, Nesvin understands seafaring as well as the seafarers do, because he was himself one. I'm a former seaman. I sailed, I sailed for 11 years. And his deep compassion is just breathtaking. So what's become clear to me is that the, mo the most important thing we do here is take care of the seafarers. And there's no other organization in the port that does it. So many of these folk are from other parts of the world. I speak uh, Italian, uh, Greek. They don't, when they hit here, they don't have a home. Arabic. Amharic, Tigrinya, Spanish. We become, in some sense, their home. Some Portuguese. And English. Of course, <laughs> English. I saw what the mission was all about. And I became so overwhelmed with the mission that actually this turned full-time. They don't have anyone else to take care of their rights. They're the last people noticed even by the owners of ships. The average seafarer, the OS, which is the ordinary seaman, or an AB, which is uh, an able-bodied seaman, has normal contracts of up to nine months away from home, and that can be extended in a whim uh, up to 12 or 14 months without a problem. They aren't in touch with their homes. They can't, they can't get off ship and just go back home and visit for a couple of days. Whatever we have to do in order to see the seafarers and be with them, we need to do. Our responsibility to them is to minister to their, their, their life, um, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Their rights are, are just largely ignored. Why are they important to the person on the street? Because 90% of their goods come from these seafarers. We don't sustain our way of life if we have no seafarers and if we don't take care of them. The people that we encounter are the ones for whom Christ gave his life and shed his blood. And they're the ones that need to hear it the most. It's, it's a Christian outreach, and I like the idea that I'm doing God's work. It's very fulfilling. That's the reason why I've been doing it for so long. So it's not surprising that Christians have been doing this. I do love the people I'm working with, though. They're, they're an incredible group of people. What keeps our volunteers engaged and what's kept the people that you've talked to today engaged is the seafarer. Joe Schmo or Jill Jane or whatever we want to call them out on the street. When they come in contact with these men and see what they have to go through, how hard their daily work is, how 18 hour days is nothing for them aboard ship suddenly you start realizing just how intense this whole thing is. And it's a ministry to the world. Seeing the sorts of things that they're up against and knowing that we can make a difference in their lives, I think that keeps us here. See, I can sleep at night because I'm doing the right thing. I'm helping my fellow human being. Being a place where we can enact the grace of God in the lives of other people, show the justice of God in other people, where we're seeing stuff that's tangible, it keeps people coming back. <laughs>